Hey you guys, how's it going? I'm Magic Wizard here, and uh, welcome back to the kind of you know weird, crazy classes. Um, this is the the kind of the first one on Modern Warfare 3, and I was using the RSAS with an ACOG scope and I believe the kick proficiency. Um, I don't know why I zoomed in at the start there, and I cannot for the life of me remember why I did that. I think it was to check out the um, like the reticule, because I think I just changed it up. But who knows? Um, anyway, in this series, I kind of I look at the guns which people don't really seem to use very often, and you know I'll get a decent gameplay with them, and then I'll show that they can actually, uh, you know, you can actually have good games with these guns, and um, I'll kind of go through the strengths and weaknesses of each of them, and um, I'll try and show you why you know you should give them a try. Um, I'll give you kind of uh, tips for attachments and proficiencies things along those lines and hopefully uh, I can get you using some different guns get you away from just sticking with you know that type 95 FMG akimbo combo which was a tongue twister to say but I pulled it off I think I pulled it off pretty well um, yeah right so let's jump straight into it the RSAS is a semi-auto sniper rifle um, it's not one hit kill it's uh, but the recoil is slightly less than that of the Barrett and the other sniper rifle, which is semi-auto, which I cannot remember the name of. But, uh, yeah, the damage isn't very high, but the small amount of recoil kind of counters that, which allows you to get off the second shot still on target fairly easily. Whereas, if you look at something like the Barrett, um, normally it'll be a one-hit kill, um, but, you know, even if it's not, you can straight away pull that second shot off. But, because the Barrett has considerably more recoil than this gun, uh, it's hard to pull off the second shot unless you're lying down with stability, in which case that gun has no recoil. But, that's a whole different story. We'll, we'll go into that another time. <coughs> uh, sorry if I sound a bit weird. Uh, I'm actually quite ill. I've got a bit of a cold, kind of a flu thing going on. Anyway, the main strengths of the RSS. Uh, you can pull off a lot of shots quickly. Um, and the recoil won't really affect it that much unless it is at you know a significant range or you are using something like the silencer. The silencer on the RSS does give it a lot, a lot of recoil. Even with kick, you know it's not a manageable amount of recoil. But with pretty much any other attachment, um, it's pretty good. Uh, I would recommend using the ACOG and playing it and playing with the mentality that this here is just a semi-auto assault rifle because basically that's what it is once you chuck the ACOG on. It's just an extremely powerful semi-auto assault rifle. It's kind of like the uh, MK14, except, uh, I don't know, the one-hit the one -hit kill uh, chance is obviously a lot better because in the game it's under the sniper rifle category. Um, with ACOG, I think ACOG is probably my f preferred attachment. Um, it comes with quite a decent magazine size considering it is a sniper rifle. Which, uh, which definitely is in, is uh, you know an advantage because it means you can uh, you can free up your proficiency slot so you don't have to use the two attachments because you don't need extended mags um, and it also means you can you know the one attachment you do have you can put on something maybe more useful I definitely prefer the ACOG sight um, also I think the variable sight would be quite good if you have it on the like the most zoomed in one not the most zoomed out. Uh, but as you can see here, you know, it's even at range like this two shots on these people I think some of them are still one shot as well because Obviously um, head and I think maybe upper chest is one hit kill with this gun If not, then it's just head, but you know still it's it's pretty good um, I actually while recording for this I had a game on Arcaden or Arcaden. I'm, I still don't know how to pronounce these maps. They're so strange But um, I actually got a triple with it you know, one bullet, three kills. So that was pretty nice. Um, yeah, that's definitely uh, one of the advantages that it's basically an assault rifle with an extremely high damage. On to the weaknesses, however. Uh, obviously, it's not a one-hit kill sniper rifle. <laughs> that's the main one. Um, at close range, it's kind of a spray and pray, but you do have the one-hit kills every now and then, so that does help. <coughs> Um, if you don't have a good trigger finger, then I would not recommend using this gun because it's, you know, one shot isn't enough to kill them. And unless you can get, you know, three or four shots off really quickly in their general direction, you'll normally get the kill. But if you don't have that trigger finger, then I, I wouldn't recommend it. 
uh, it takes it takes a while to get used to this gun. The first few games, I was doing some pretty pretty poor scores, but you know, once you get used to it, it's okay. Uh, the reload time is not amazing. Uh, I can't remember what perks I was using. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was quick draw because with sniper rifles, in my opinion, you need quick draw because without it, the zoom in is just a bit too slow. Um, I would also recommend possibly steady aim because at close range it definitely will help uh, if you can just you know hip fire at them and at kind of I think my first perk I'm not certain <laughs> I actually can't remember um, possibly blind eye because the last thing you want when you're a sniper rifle is to be shown up on the map and everyone running towards you um, especially if you're in a room because then you know you have to kill them at close range and you've only got the sniper rifle so I would recommend possibly blind eye, um, or if not blind eye, maybe uh, sleight of hand, because obviously the faster reloads is going to help. But then again, you shouldn't really be in the situations where you need a fast reload anyway. I mean, um, like being at close range with this gun is not ideal. Preferably, you want to be at medium to long range, um, which means you kind of have to tra uh, to traverse the map slightly differently to how you would with any other gun, which is. I don't know if that's a weakness or that's a strength because you won't be, you know, you don't want to be running down the sight lines where everyone's going to be seeing you all the time. You kind of want to, you know, take the back routes, get behind people, come up on them unsuspecting and, I mean, obviously you want to do that of every gun, but with this gun you kind of have to if you want to get the kills. So running straight on at people isn't necessarily the best. Um, I have no idea what I was doing here, you know, I kind of started killing people and then stopped and... It was crazy, but uh, anyway, back to back on topic. I would, yeah, you have to get behind them if you want to be able to get the kills because one on one, if they're behind cover, you aren't probably gonna win the gunfight. To be completely honest with you, <laughs> you're not gonna win the gunfight, um, especially if you've got ACOG because of the idle sway that the ACOG site has. It's a considerable amount. I imagine that with stability, this gun would be pretty good. Because at long range it would allow you to get a couple of shots off and, you know, there wouldn't be much recoil at all. So, uh, I think stability would definitely be a good choice. Also, as with most sniper rifles, speed is a good choice as well. Because you can see here that you run at, like, LMG speed, which is not ideal. Considering you want to be able to get to those positions as fast as you can. And then take out the enemy as fast as you can. Because, you know, whoever has the better position is normally going to win the gunfight. Um, I keep seeing the gun, like the weird wiggle that theater mode has, and it's really putting me off. <clears throat> anyway, uh, back to recommended perks. I would say quick draw is a necessity. I would say either blind eye um, or sleight of hand. And then third perk, you could either go for because of the a if you're using ACOG site, I would maybe recommend dead silence because uh, if people are going to be sound whoring, then you don't want to be getting sound whored, especially if you've got a sniper rifle at close range. Um, if not dead silence, then steady aim, just for the, uh, you know, I've, I've already spoken about steady aim. Steady aim's a good choice, I think. Um, if not then, then maybe sit rep, because, uh, well, it depends what game type you're playing. I mean, obviously, uh, team deathmatch, people do like to put down their betties and claim wars. So sit rep can be handy for that, but, you know, third perk, uh, it's really up to personal preference. Personally, I would go for either steady aim or dead silence. Um... Equipment, uh, whichever you know, whichever you want. I mean, you're going to be at close range, long range, every kind of range with this gun. So, you know, grenades are helpful. Um, Betty's are helpful. You know, Betty's are always helpful. I think, you know, pre personal preference is definitely, definitely part of your equipment slots. Um, I think, uh, when it comes to strike packages, I would go for probably not specialist because it's unlikely you'll get a long streak with it. But uh, the kind of, what is it, support, support's really, really good. So I recommend support. But looks like the video's ended, guys. <laughs> I've just been rambling for a long, long time. Uh, 32 and 8 final score was. Hopefully you have enjoyed. And I will be, uh, I've already got a few more of these kind of weird class gameplays. Already stocked up on my hard drive. So you can expect these and the Road to God Gun again over the next few days. And as usual, I will catch you all next time. Goodbye.